All right, welcome back everyone. I'm going to show you how to do a scan after we've configured the instrument. We just go down here and we click on this setup button here. There we go. And now we've got the setup dialog box and you can see here we have seven types of different scans that this instrument can do. This box is somewhat intelligent, so depending on how your hardware is configured, the various scan modes will show or they will not show. So for the first one, we simply click once here on Emission Scan. Then we can go up and we can choose the parameters under Acquisition Settings next. All right, so by clicking on this, you can see you've got the excitation monochromator where you'll type in your excitation. This sample I'm looking at is uh, BSA, which we're going to be exciting a tryptophan in this protein residue. And we're going to scan from 300 to 450 nanometers. So we'll be exciting at 390 and we're going to scan from 300 to 450 on the emission side. All right. This is where you would set the monochromator bandpass, the slit width. I'll just leave these at the default values. These slits are manual control. So whatever entry you put in here is just uh, for your text purposes. If you had a motorized slit, these of course would control motors uh, and they would set the bandwidth appropriately. All right, next we'll choose the integration time, and you can see here we'll go say 0 0.05 seconds at each wavelength. So the monochromator will go to 290, integrate for 0 0.05 seconds, and then move on to the next wavelength in a one nanometer step size. All right, this can be set from anything from uh, about a quarter nanometer on up. And we're now ready to start that scan, so we just say accept and we simply next click on the start button. If you want to verify your settings you can look through this text output which will basically tell you all the parameters that you set up. All right, so we'll click start next the monochromators will prepare and then the scan will begin. All right, on this side you've got your intensity in counts per second so we're sitting at 5.5 so that's 550,000 counts per second in digital mode and down here you can see this axis is wavelength in nanometers. So this scan will be finished at 450 nanometers. Once this is done we can save this scan or we can rename it. Right now I've this called acquisition and the date and the time are in there. But if I want to I can rename this and we can call this say trip. And we say OK and you can see that we've renamed that and we can save this by going to the file menu, save record as, and we can call that BSA emission scan. And that will save as a GXZ, a compressed file format. And that's all there is to doing a scan. If we want to improve the signal to noise ratio in the scan, we can increase the integration time. So I can simply go back to my setup so let's change that now to say a 0.1 second integration time and then if we start this scan we'll be integrating a little longer and that's going to improve our signal to noise ratio so you can see the data trace is a little smoother looking because we have a longer integration time so depending on your sample you'll have to adjust the integration time accordingly of course you can also adjust the light input if you need more or less light with the monochromator slits, but that's the basic premise behind doing an emission scan.